Hi everyone, it's good to see you again. We are meeting again to discuss First Reconciliation in our Together with Jesus uh, program using those materials. So today you will be using your um, pamphlet, your Together in Jesus Parent Guide, along with the review when we're all finished. You will also have your assessment when you're all done. You can do that online or you can do it hard copy and email it to me, scan it, text it, whatever's easiest, and your stickers. Okay. Also, your poster for lesson six. Okay. So as always, we will begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, thank you for gathering us together as members of this parish. We are so happy that we will be receiving the sacrament of reconciliation. It shows how much God loves us. Help us to find more ways to act like you, Lord. Help us to love, forgive, and share all that you have given us and showed us in your life. Please hear these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. a nice song. Alrighty. Today our lesson, I need you to pull this out and follow along with me. Our lesson is as I prepare for first reconciliation. Um, unfortunately we're not together so it's kind of hard. If you were here at school I would bring you over to the church and I would show you where the reconciliation rooms are so that in the future you would be able to go um, to confession or reconciliation on your own or with your parents, uh, and you would use those uh, rooms. Maybe, and hopefully, if your parents are able, I, you know, it depends on with COVID how things are in being safe, but <clears throat> if anybody is comfortable, they can bring their son or daughter over to the church. Uh, uh, sac sacrament of Reconciliation is uh, on Saturdays. Uh, I believe it's 2 or 2.30, it's in the bulletin. So uh, that is always uh, available, but you can come to the church and um, not visit a priest, but just visit the reconciliation rooms, just so the kids know uh, what they look like. Um, 
it, uh, any day actually between 8 and 12. I know that the church is open during that time. So at some point when you're at Mass, you can go back. They're over in the chapel area, and there are two rooms, uh, one for Father Furlong and one for Father Rogers. Uh, and you can just kind of knock on the door, make sure nobody's in there, and then <clears throat> open the door, and um, you can you can look inside. I, they are doing some uh, remodeling and things, so not remodeling, but cleaning. Uh, so I wonder, if, you know, you might see some chairs and stuff uh, moved around, but don't think in Father Rogers, I think that's the case, but you could look in Father Furlong's um, room and uh, see. So the kids could see where they could kneel and there's a screen in front of them, or if they go behind and they sit where uh, Father Rogers uh, and or Father Furlong would be sitting and you sit in a chair across for them, uh, just so that they know how to experience that. Um, the night of reconciliation, they won't be uh, in the reconciliation rooms. They'll just be sitting in a chair across from a priest, whether it's uh, Father Rogers, Father Furlong, Father DeLucia. There'll be many priests there that day. We usually have about six or seven throughout the uh, church separated. And as I mentioned to you last week, and we'll talk about it a little bit further in the upcoming weeks prior to our uh, reconciliation celebration, uh, procedurally what will happen. Everything's color coded. Uh, there'll be, uh, you know, if everything's color coded down to the priest where you're sitting, your name tags, all of that. So, uh, but today we're going to talk about how to go to uh, confession, how to go to reconciliation, and that there are, you know, four parts uh, in the reconciliation sacrament. So, Please, if you get an opportunity to do so, bring your son or daughter so that they're familiar with the reconciliation rooms. Um, sometime prior to reconciliation, if you can do so. Uh, if not, you could do it at a, at a different time, even, even that evening, you know. Uh, remember, it is January 27th at six o'clock. If you have not gotten your second packet, which has all of these red, I mean, purple, uh, lessons in there, the Together in Jesus, uh, please do so because at the end of um, December, I will be putting together the uh, materials for Unit 3. And in Unit 3, you will be getting your blue folders for First uh, Eucharist. So you need to get these and get them done so that you can get it in there so we're ready to roll for first reconciliation on uh, in January. Okay, let's look at our uh, papers here. Okay, I prepare for first reconciliation. All of us fail to keep the commandments sometimes. God promises us forgiveness when we confess our sins and say I'm sorry. Parishes can celebrate the sacrament of reconciliation. They can do it as a community where we gather together to listen to the gospel story and remember all Jesus asks of us. Together we confess our unloving actions or our sins. We also can tell them to a priest. Um, and with that, so if you do what's called a communal penance service, if you're looking at your paper, that's where you know we gather together either at mass or a penance service. It's generally uh, around Lent. Uh, that that might happen, maybe um, sometimes uh, Advent, you know, if now again, this year is a little bit different because it's a, a, a COVID year, so we're not gathering together as much, but in normal circumstances, there'll be a communal penance service where everybody is together and then you'll say the prayers together and you will you know, confess your sins in, in in your in your head, and the priest will absolve everybody together in a group. That's called a communal or community communal penance service. Um, if you look at this picture over here, you see uh, a young lady speaking with the priest just face to face, and that's what will happen the night of your first reconciliation you will be sitting across from the priest just like she's doing and sitting there and talking to him. 
okay? And, and that's when you go individually. So you can go individually, you can go as a community or in a communal where you're together. You can go individually here, just talking to the priest, or if your parents give an opportunity to go to the confessional booth, you can see how there's like a screen in front of this young man and the priest is on the other side. Um, so you're talking through the screen uh, instead. So we can also tell them uh, the priest our sins and ask God's forgiveness so that we can grow closer to him. We can also celebrate the sacrament of re reconciliation as individuals whenever we need to, as we talk to our priest in the special reconciliation room that we just talked about. We can go face to face or we can express sorrow and forgiveness and talk to the priest through the screen in that reconciliation room. Okay. If we turn the page, we go to the next page. It talks about the four parts of reconciliation. Reconciliation has four parts, and we had talked about this. The four parts are uh, when you show sorrow. Remember you in your mind, you um, examine your conscience. We talked about that, and I think in lessons two and three, where you examine your conscience. Um, and remember we had those questions that we looked at in like two or three. Uh, we talked about um, the Ten Commandments and how um, those commandments can be turned into questions in lesson two. You can look at those and you can use those. I also have <clears throat> questions in that role playing activity for you where you kind of ask yourself the question. So it kind of jars your memory so that when you go to speak with a priest, you have some ideas in your head about what you want to do. For example, what you want to talk about. Did I keep God's commandments? Those are um, in lesson two. Uh, do I love God with my whole heart? Did I use God's name only for praying, not for swearing or anger and fun, you know, when you say things when you're angry? Uh, do I worship God at Mass on Sundays? Do I show respect for my parents and others who care for me? Have I been mean to anyone? Have I done anything to hurt my own self or someone else who I care about or someone else's body? Have I taken or destroyed things that belong to others? Do I tell the truth? Have I lied? Have I been jealous of what other people have or other people's lifestyles and things like that? The answers to those questions, that's when you examine your conscience, when you think about things that might be sins. And remember, we talked about sins. What are sins? They're when you do something wrong, you know it's wrong, but you do it anyway. So they are unloving actions or things that happen that pull us away from God and the people that we care about and, and others, actually. So a sin is something we do that's wrong. We know it's wrong. We don't care. We do it anyway. We want, we just feel like doing our own thing. And that's, you know, sometimes causes us to, you know, hurt others. And, do, you know, act in a way that's not loving and kind. So when we are sorry, we have to just, we can't just say we're sorry. Like, oh, I'm sorry. You, you know, you know, you have to actually feel that you're sorry for you to be forgiven. You have to really show some remorse, which means I'm really sorry. I, I feel sorry. That's what remorse means. I feel sorry. I really am sorry. I'm not just saying I'm sorry. So that's the first part of reconciliation is to say I'm sorry. So you think about your sins. You can use those questions if you want to. You examine your conscience. Your conscience tells you what's right or wrong. And you feel sorry for them. That's the first part. If you don't really feel sorry, then you're not going to be forgiven. So that's the first thing. The second thing is then to confess your sins. What does confess mean? Confess means to tell. So you confess your sins to the priest. You tell him. Okay, you can do it face to face. You can do it in a group. Or you can do it behind that screen. Okay, this is how we're going to go to first reconciliation. 
you're going to talk face to face to the priest. Okay. So you're going to confess or tell him your sins. And remember, you're doing that role playing activity with your parents where they're pretending where they're the priest and you're reaching in and you're grabbing some of those fake sins. We're only using those fake sins because you know, you don't really want to tell your real sins to your parents. You want to wait and tell them to the priest. So we're just practicing with fake sins. But you want to be thinking about two or three things and have them prepared so that when you get together on the reconciliation night, you know what you're going to talk about to Father. You know what you really, really feel sorry for. You've examined your conscience. You've thought about, you've asked yourself all those questions. And you've thought about what you really are sorry for and what you want to confess to the priest, confess or tell your sins. So that's step two of the process. Four steps, four parts to reconciliation. Very sorry, and you confess or tell him your sins. The third step is when the priest gives you a penance. Who remembers what penance means? Exactly. <laughs> I can't really hear you, but I know you're telling me. I can, I can think about that you know this already, right? Penance means it's a prayer that the priest will give you. He'll give you a penance. He'll give you a prayer or some kind of action that says that you're sorry. You know, it's something that you're going to do. You're not just going to say you're sorry. It's something you're going to do that says you're sorry. So he might say, you know, I want you to go back to your seat and say an Our Father. So he gives you that penance. He wants you to go back to the pew and pray the Our Father. And that shows God that you're really sorry. That's something that you're doing. Or he might say, um, maybe one of your sins that you uh, confessed or you told the Father was that you lose your temper or you, um, you know, my mom asks me to do something and I always tell her, oh, in a minute, in a minute, in a minute. Well, you know, that's not good. Then your mom gets mad and then she says, you always say in a minute, you never do what I ask you to do. Is that honoring your father and mother? Is that, that's breaking one of God's commandments, right? So <clears throat> that's not honoring her. So if she asks you to do something, you need to get up and do it. Okay, so maybe Father talks to you a little bit about that. He might say, you know, I know we always get, you know, we get involved in things or we might be playing a game or watching a movie or uh, doing our homework and we want to finish one more thing. But if your mom needs you and she's called you, then, you know, you need to get up and, and go when she asks you because you don't know. It might be something serious. She might need help right away, like right now. It might be important or serious. Uh, so... Um, try to, to make yourself do things right away when you're asked to do them. Um, the next time, just put your pencil down or get right up and, and, and go. You know, he might give you some different little activity to do um, to help yourself to learn to do better in that particular area. And then, and then also say a Nar Father or a Hail Mary. So that's what a penance is, remember? First you act, you, you, you are sorry. You examine your conscience and you realize how sorry you are. You have remorse, you feel sorrow. The second thing is you confess or you tell the priest your sins. Now he gives you a penance, that's the third step. He gives you a penance. A penance is something to say or do that really shows that you're sorry, okay? It's not just saying you're sorry, it's showing that you're sorry. It's an action that shows that you're sorry. Okay? The last step, step four. The last step, the priest will absolve you from your sins. That's a big word. What does absolve mean? What do you think that means? He absolves you from your sins. We talked about this, you're right. It means he washes them away. He forgives your sins. He, he absolves them. He washes them the way they're gone. I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father. And remember when you, when he says in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you're blessing yourself when, while he's saying a prayer over you. I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
That means those sins are gone. Okay. I forgot to tell you before we got to the absolving, he will ask you to say the act of contrition. And you've been practicing that, right? I know. My God, I am sorry for all my sins with all my heart in choosing to do wrong and failing to do good. I have sinned against you, whom I should love above all things. I firmly intend with your help to do penance, means to do something that shows I feel badly and I'm, I'm, I'm going to do better, to sin no more and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Amen. It's the act of contrition. Then he says, okay, because he's giving you a penance. You're, you say the act of contrition. That's the prayer. Contrition means sorrow. I'm sorry. So the act of being sorrowful, you say that prayer. He absolves you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then that means God's forgiven you. That means God's forgiven you. So you go back to your pew with your parents and you do your penance, whatever it is, whether it's two Hail Marys or one Our Father or whatever. And if he's kind of talked with you a little bit about what to do, in a situation that, you know, like your mother or um, losing your temper or whatever it is that you talked about. And he said, you know, count to 10 or say a Hail Mary before you lose your temper. Maybe that'll help. Things of that nature. Don't forget to incorporate that in your daily activities. Okay. All right. So let's go over those one more time. <clears throat> the first part of reconciliation. Remember, reconciliation means coming back with God coming back to Jesus and our community and the love, right? And you've reconciled. So that has four parts, four things you're going to do. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to examine your conscience and you're going to ask yourself those questions and think about what it is you're going to talk to the priest and you're going to be sorry. You're going to feel sorrowful. You're going to feel remorse because you want to do better. Okay, that's the first step. Second step is where you confess or you tell the priest your sins. And again, what's a sin? A sin is when you do something wrong, you know it's wrong, but you do it anyway. That's what a sin is, okay? Um, so that's the second thing that you do. The third thing, the third step would be when the priest gives you a penance an activity or an action that shows that you're sorrowful, whether it's a prayer or some kind of an action, that's your penance. <clears throat> then you will pray the act of contrition. My God, I am sorry for all my sins with all my heart in choosing to do wrong and failing to do good. I have sinned against you whom I love above all things. I firmly intend with your help to do penance, to sin no more, to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then the last step is he absolves you. I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God has forgiven you. You go back to your pew with your parents. You say or do your penance. And you feel the love of God, the community, and everyone around you. They're so proud of you. You're back with Jesus. You're reconciled to start again. Now, <clears throat> if you sin again, does that mean you're awful and you're bad and you're... No, it means we are all trying. We're all trying to be like God, but he's the only perfect one. We all make mistakes. We just have to keep trying. We just have to keep trying our very, very best, you know, and we ask for forgiveness and we come back to God and we try again, all the harder. Okay. All right. Now this asks you to put that cross with the flowers on it. Why do you think there might be flowers on that sticker on the cross? Yeah. Flowers show new life, right? So, all your sins are washed away. They're dead. They're gone. And now you're back with Christ, the cross, you're back with God, 
So you've been reconciled and new life, flowers, okay? We're starting again, we're beginning anew. It's a, a, a new beginning. All right, you guys did great with that. Now, that's that's really, really good, but that's that's really the whole the whole sacrament in a nutshell, okay? All righty. When we turn the page on this material, um, I'm going to talk to your parents a little bit here. You're going to, there's like little lines on here, dotted lines. That means you're going to cut this out, okay? So you're going to cut it across here, and you're going to make a little book. Okay, so you're going to cut it across here, and then you're going to fold it. All right, and it's going to be a little um, reconciliation prayer service that you are, are going to do with your parents. We would be doing it here in the classroom with kids, and so you'll see that there's boy parts, girl parts, all parts. There's a leader. You're going to have to kind of look at everybody in your family, your brothers, your sisters, your mom, your dad, and do your little prayer service, just give each other parts. You know, you be the boy, you be the girl, you be the leader. We'll all do it together, okay? And um, as you do that little prayer service, think about the different, <clears throat> the four parts, because that little prayer service covers the four parts, the sorrow, confess, penance, and absolution. All of those things will be touched on in your prayer service, okay? And then you'll play that song, I'm sorry, that we did at the very beginning again, okay? That is on the Together in Jesus um, song list, and it is in CD1, and it is number nine. So if you go to the St. Charles website, go to Together in Jesus Music, pick CD1 and number nine, and that is the I'm Sorry Prayer, or song that I played at the very beginning and we'll play again at the end of our um, lesson here today. Okay? So parents, I'm gonna be talking to you for a minute here. Um, in looking at teaching that uh, that little booklet there, okay, you're going to uh, talk through this with your with your kids. All right. So at the very beginning, where it says, "Listen to Jesus teaching," and it says, "Help the children recall the stories that have been studied in." this lessons one through six, or actually one through five, because this is lesson six. And think about the stories that they, they did, you know, the, the man who was left on the street, the uh, father with the prodigal son, the, the son that went away and then came back and they, you know, had a big party and those kinds of things. So you're going to kind of review some of those stories, and then they're going to pick one and then Choose one of Jesus' favorite stories about forgiveness as, as uh, we looked through in all those five stories, five lessons. And then they're going to draw a scene from that one of those stories that they did. Okay. So then see the first part here is we're sorry for our sins. So that's the first part. So talk about that. So it, like in lessons two and three, we talked about the Ten Commandments. Um, and those questions and examining your conscience and treating others as we would have our, we would want to be treated. Love God above all else, you know, with all my heart, soul, and mind, and then treat others as we treat ourselves. And that's what the Ten Commandments, remember the first three are about God, the last seven are about um, how we treat others. Uh, and they can use those questions to examine their conscience. So that's how they decide what it is that they're going to talk about and then feel bad about and feel remorseful and feel sorrow about it. I don't want to say feel bad, but feel sorry that, that, that they did those things and that they sinned. They did something wrong. They knew it was wrong. They did it anyway. It affects everyone around them. Okay. Not only themselves, but, or the person that they, you know, sinned against, but other people too. 
the community and so forth. And, you know, we talked about in lessons two and three. Then the next step, it says we accept penance. That's the third step. And um, those are the loving actions that we talked about. And that, like, we just talked about that in lesson five. You know, how do you and your family say you're sorry to each other? What are the things that you do? Or with your friends, you know, do you shake hands? Do you hug? Do you give a little kiss? Do you share your toys? Do you do something special? Do you, um, you know, make a cake? Uh, what it, whatever it is that you decide to do, do you, you know, smile and tell a joke and, you know, whatever. How are the things that you do or what are the things that you do either as a family or, or friends to show that you are sorry? What are those actions? And that's what it, the penance is. Um, so, and then the next step, step is um, we are sorry, and that's the act of contrition. This one is a little bit uh, different. So, um, you know, it just has a, one more line in it. So we show we're sorry, and then God forgives our sins. That's the absolution. So, and then your prayer service, which is over here. Um, and then we talked about absolution today. It is absolving or washing away. Uh, and you can talk about like the story that we, you know, that we talked about how, um, you know, when the apostles were all in the room and um, they locked the door because they were afraid that the soldiers were going to come and get them too after Jesus uh, was crucified and rose and then they turned around and they saw him there and the Holy Spirit had filled the room and Jesus made those apostles able to forgive sins. Those sins you are for, you have forgive are forgiven. Those that you don't are not forgiven. So those people have to feel sorrow. So anyway, you can talk about all of those things. Those are all the um, lessons that we talked about and then have that little prayer service together and remember cd1 together in jesus number nine if you want a little music i love pizzazz <laughs> to your um, prayer service okay all righty um and then your stickers you have your stickers that you're going to Put in on your paper if you want to add any music or any more videos they're on your links on the back <clears throat> is your review and the kids would either uh, they can write a few words and draw what their uh, one thing that they learned about their lesson and draw the favorite part of their lesson that they did and that's on there and then your um, together in Jesus assessment. You can either do it on here, like I said, or you can do it online. Okay. <clears throat> the last thing that you have to review um, on this poster for this lesson, we're going to still, the next few lessons that we're going to do are more procedural uh, for what will be happening <coughs> on First Reconciliation Night. Okay. So, this is actually the next section uh, for the lesson is practicing the act of contrition. And I think I said to you um, the last lesson, lesson five, I, I would do something that would be repetitious. Um, so this is just a little, uh, can I pray the act of contrition? I will need, you know, it's like a little chart. And it says on the first try, do you need work? You're almost there, I'm ready, second try. You know, you can just make little X's there if you want to do that. But I, um, I would incorporate it in our your daily routine. For example, if you always say prayers before uh, meals, I would pick one of the meals that you're praying at and have, and you guys can say the act of contrition instead of the prayer for meals that day. Or <clears throat> if you pray at night before you go to bed and you pray for everyone, you know, angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God love commits me here. Instead of praying that one, uh, pray the act of contrition each night before you go to bed. 
anything that you're doing every day and it, you know that you're not just doing it over and over and over again but you're doing it daily <clears throat> that's how they i mean they know the our father they know the hail mary you've been doing those daily okay try that and then you can use this little chart if you would like to do that okay the more you practice the more they know what they're doing and I, I again apologize that we're in this COVID situation and I can't be with the kids so we're not together so a lot of it I'm trying to help you as much as I can but a lot of it is um, you guys but you are their biggest teachers I mean they go to you more than anyone else they're with you more than anyone else so how you react to each other in forgiving each other um, forgiving other people uh, all of your actions you know and what you do if you pray they'll pray you know it is what it is you know so no stress but there you go <laughs> we're here to help but you know, it is, it is a lot of, of you. So um, keep practicing. They'll be more comfortable. It'll be, it'll be, they'll feel good because they won't be nervous. They'll be a little nervous because they've never experienced it, but they won't be um, nervous because they'll know what they're doing. Um, and they'll, they're going to feel the love because this sacrament again is all about love. It's a beautiful, beautiful sacrament. And Again, if you get good at this, you will enhance your life and the people around you. you. You just will, because you'll be full of love. It takes so much to be uh, angry. It's so much energy to be angry and hold grudges. And it, it's like a disease. It just cuts people off. It cuts things out of your life that missed opportunities, total missed opportunities, you know, so learn how to love, learn how to forgive, even if, even if you're right, just let it go. It's just not worth it. In the end, it's just not worth it. Life's too short, it's way too short. So show your kids how to love, keep loving, hang in there. Um, we're going to finish with a prayer. <clears throat> as I love to do. And then we're going to play that song again one more time. If you have any questions, you need anything, please feel free to call me. My office is 513. Oh, that's my cell phone. Cell is 513-260-9369. My office is 330-758-8063. Uh, email me. I'm jdrummond at youngstowndiocese.org. Have a great week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, together we are a Catholic family. And we gather together in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Loving God, we sometimes fail to love you and to love one another. Forgive us the same as we forgive others. Amen. Once Peter asked Jesus how many times he should forgive someone, and Jesus said, seven. Peter said, seven times, is that enough? Should we forgive them seven times? And he goes, no, Peter, seven times, 70. Peter said, what does that mean? And Jesus said, that means always, always forgive, always forgive. Lord, let us ask God to forgive us for our sins. We are sorry for the time when we got angry with one another. We are sorry when we didn't help or forgot to do our chores. Lord, we are sorry when we made fun of others. We are sorry for these, Lord, and all the sins that we can't remember. Let us bow our heads and ask God to forgive us. Let us also tell God that we forgive one another. Let's do this by saying the act of contrition. My God, I am sorry for all my sins with all my heart. In choosing to do wrong and failing to do good, I have sinned against you, whom I should love above all things. 
I firmly intend with your help to do penance, to sin no more, and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Amen. Lord, please hear these prayers. Through the death and resurrection of, Le of Jesus, God forgives our sins. Loving God, help us to live the ways of your Son, Jesus, that he has taught us. We ask this in the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Call me if you need me. Take care, stay safe, and be healthy. Bye-bye.